Hi guys, my name is uh, Christine. I am with Dogs for Life Training and Wellness. And today um, I wanna just kind of do a uh, little talk about um, signs of poor communication. And so how do you know if you're being effective in your communication? And so that's a topic um, that I think that uh, as dog trainers, we often um, experience with our clients. Um, obviously people are reaching out because they're struggling in some areas, they need some questions answered. And so it really kind of comes down to, um, in, from a training perspective of, are we being effective in our communication? So before we dive into it, Again, I just wanna quickly introduce myself. My name is Christine. I am the owner of Dogs for Life Training and Wellness. And um, I am a people trainer for dogs, been training people and family dogs for over 20 years. And, um, you know, my goal is to really kind of help people to understand the process of training, to be able to utilize tools that will help them throughout their dog's training because it just doesn't happen when they're puppies, but it could happen throughout their lives. You know, situations happen, we move, there are unexpected things that kind of happen throughout the, uh, throughout the years. And we wanna be able to have tools uh, to utilize to help our dogs understand what it is that we're looking for and how to affect uh, and how to communicate with them effectively. And so along with that, um, I also focus on nutrition as well as food sensitivities because both of those really impact our dog's ability to learn, their ability to focus, uh, and their ability to just kind of, you know, live within their lives. And, uh, you know, and sometimes uh, food sensitivities or nutritional deficiencies can um, create behaviors that uh, we're, we're not expecting. So people don't really think about that, but that's for another video. Today, again, we are gonna just talk about um, the signs of poor communication. And so how do you know if you are an effective communicator and or um, that you have, or what are, or, or what are the signs of poor communication? And so uh, when I think about that, poor communication would be like somebody who would say, you know, my dog doesn't listen to me, or uh, my dog won't come when I call them. Uh, my dog pulls me on the leash. My dog jumps on people. Uh, my dog isn't pottying where they're supposed to be pottying. Uh, my dog doesn't stay in the yard. Uh, my dog doesn't get along with other animals. Um, you know, maybe they chase your cat in the house or, you know, they don't leave your older dog alone or, um, you know, those are all indicators that not only does the dog not know, but we are poor communicators. We are not effective in helping the dog to understand uh, those pieces and what is expected of those. And so there are a few key elements that help us to be more effective in our communication, but being aware of what causes the problem generally helps people to understand how to be more efficient. And so one of the signs of poor communication would be inconsistency. That inconsistency would be like within the family itself. It could be an individual who's inconsistent in the words that they use as they're trying to train their dog or teach their dog something, or it's within the family unit where everybody is using a different word. So an example of that would be, you know, if the dog jumps on somebody, if the dog jumps on somebody and one person is saying, you know, get off and the other one is pushing them saying, you know, down, or, you know, somebody is just turning their back on them. Those are all different ways of to communicate. But when there's inconsistencies, it means the dog isn't able to assimilate what it is that we're trying to get across because everybody's got a different pattern. So think of it from a people's perspective. 
if I were to come in and teach you one way of training and somebody else came in and taught you another form of training and somebody yet came into another, you know, to teach you another form of training, that would be really confusing. How would you take that information from everybody and try to create this uh, understanding? And so inconsistency of words create poor communication. In the same content, inconsistency of individual words that could me have different meanings. And so a common one would be the word down. Um, and so I often see this when people utilize it, for example, if the dog jumps on you and they use the word down. Um, if the dog jumps up on the counter and they maybe use the word down or maybe they jump on the furniture and you want the dog to remove themselves and you tell the dog get get down um and or you utilize the word down for them to lie on their belly that is multiple different meanings for the same word which means we are not being effective in our communication because there's that inconsistency and so the choice of words utilizing a single word for a single behavior and making sure that the family uses the same word helps to be more effective um, in helping our dog to understand what it is that we're trying to, to use. Another uh, form of uh, inconsistency would be, um, you know, uh, utilizing um, an opportunity that when a dog is doing something that we're not happy with, um, to be able to give them an alternative. So for example, and again, because so many dogs do jump on people, it's a common one, we'll just use that as the example. If a dog jumps up on you and you tell your dog to get off, we're really not helping the dog to understand what we prefer them to do instead. And so we're only giving them half of the information. It would be similar to me saying to you, I need you to go to Target. But I don't give you any further information as to why I want you to go to Target. So if I want you to go to Target because I need you to pick up this, 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 and this, and this, and then I'm very clear, I need you to make the trip to Target and these are the items that I need for you to get. And so when we tell our dog not to do something without an alternative, we're only giving them half of the information. And so what ends up happening is the dog will always do what they think is the right thing to do. And so it becomes very frustrating for pet owners because it seems like the dog's not listening to me but we haven't taught them anything different or we haven't indicated to them of what we prefer them to do instead. Which leads to the third part of being an uh, ineffective uh, communicator is by actually training your dog to do what it is that you would prefer them to do. Again, if your dog jumps but doesn't understand a sit, then you need to take the time to train the sit and then train the stay so that the dog understands when they come up to you, when you call them, you ask them to sit and to hold that position. And so these are kind of common uh, reasons why uh, people are not very effective in communicating with our dogs because there's inconsistency amongst the family there's inconsistencies uh, in the words that we're using. There's inconsistencies as to offering the alternative um, and not giving your dog um, an opportunity to comply to something that we're looking for them to do. And so um, all of these lead to a dog's failure to be compliant, which leads to frustration and that just takes us to a whole nother avenue when the people are frustrated and our dogs become frustrated 
And what generally happens, our dogs then begin to develop behavioral issues because they're frustrated. They're trying to find a way to relieve their frustration. So they chew the end of your couch and or they dig holes in your backyard or they're always putting something in their mouth. They're, and so anyways, these are just behaviors that happen when we're inconsistent and we're poor communicators. And so I just wanted to give you those three tips on how to become a little bit more effective, how to identify if you are being effective as a communicator, and then steps that you could take to be more efficient and help your dog to understand what it is that you want. And again, my name is Christine with Dogs for Life. Please take a moment and give us a thumbs up. When you do that, it lets me know that you're interested in our videos so that we could put out more videos um, of something that might be similar. And so I just want to wish you all a happy day and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.